Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and turning the great strategy games, including Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, arguably the greatest game ever made. Uh, wow, uh, when you complete the setup for this first turn uh, in the Grand Campaign, it feels like you've completed a marathon. Literally, I think it did take me about 26 well, I was going to say 26 hours. Hopefully, well, that's probably about how long it would take me to run a marathon. It's 26 miles. Uh, I don't even know. But the point being is, man, there's a lot of things to set up, and I love it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. And if you're here on the channel, you probably love it too, uh, especially if you love like transportation-type games, because so much of it is logistics. Uh, I'm centered over Australia here. I was doing some final cleanup things before we send the turn uh, back to Lodric. The devious Lodric, uh, to see what he's got in store for us on turn two. Um, now, I've never played two-day turns before. I think we've talked about that a little bit. But uh, it did allow him to get a lot more damage in on the Philippines than I think would be normal. Now, if I were to ever play two-day turns again, I would specify uh, that you are allowed to move your submarines, for instance, out of Manila, uh, because he just absolutely uh, savaged our submarine core. Now, we'll be fine. It'll be okay. It's not the biggest deal in the world. You get a lot of submarines uh, as the allies. Um, and really early in the game, they're not very good anyway. So whatever. Uh, but the point is, is I, I think I would say, hey, you know, you should be able to move your submarines potentially out of Manila because that's not very historical. Your, that half your submarine fleet gets sunk at there. I mean, uh, there was probably as much damage at Manila as there was uh, at Pearl Harbor. <laughs> it was that bad. Uh, but that's okay. We'll go up and take a look at that here in a minute. I just kind of wanted to talk to you about a few of the things I've been doing here uh, as a cleanup at the end. And Cole actually uh, recommends this as well if you look over his spreadsheet. But I'm going here to the, uh, you saw the information or intelligence tab, I guess we call it. Uh, it's the I that's right up there. We'll, you know, I can point it out again if you want me to. But the idea is industry and resources. So these are all of your resources in the game. And this is like, this is something we don't talk a whole lot about. And if you just followed my tutorials, uh, I don't go in depth on this. I mean, it's probably more of a, you know, intermediate to advanced topic about all of your different industries and resources. Uh, but there's a few things that you definitely want to do. And so I figure if you're tuning into this, you probably played the game or you want to play the game or you've watched the tutorials and so let's just talk about it a little bit. You know, uh, with your industries, you've got resources, you've got manpower, light industry, you've got repair shipyards, you've got, most importantly, heavy and light industry. Uh, that's why we dump all of the fuel into Karachi and into Perth, uh, because Australia and India, respectively, have a lot of light and heavy industry, and they take that fuel uh, they combine it with supplies and, you know, with that witch's brew all uh, bubbles up. And the next thing you know, did I just say supply? Yeah, yeah, I did say. Uh, the You put the fuel, I'm sorry, you put the fuel into the, you know, Perth or Karachi. It flows through the rail lines. It goes to the light and heavy industry and out of, out of the end pops supplies. That's what I meant to say. So... Uh, you know, you wouldn't think necessarily, oh, fuel, you know, that's going to make supplies. But it does when you pump it into heavy and light industry. Now, a lot of this stuff happens behind the scenes. I mean, you don't control that. It's not like you're out here building factories. You do everything else in this game. Uh, but your main job in this game is getting fuel and supplies where they need to be. And I talk a lot about in the uh, tutorial uh, and in my previous Let's Play where I was just playing the AI, I talk a lot about nodes. And what do I mean by nodes? Well, you want to pick about five or six important spots in different places and have pretty much everything going in there. If nothing else, it helps you keep track of where everything is. Uh, but those are really the main spots, and they were historically. Uh, you know, so... Uh, we'll go around the map. I'll talk about the different no 
nodes, but let's stay on this thought for a second. Um, so you have, you know, light industry, heavy industry, manpower, resources, uh, repair shipyards, you can kind of forget about that. I mean, you want to know where they are, but uh, if you get, you know, damaged ships, obviously, uh, but that's not what I'm talking about here. And so we go down and you can see it's an alphabetical list of all of the different production that you have in the game. Now, again, you can't switch these around. You can't move them. It's not like war in, the original War in the East, whereas the Soviet player, you could ship out your factory somewhere. These are pretty much static on the map. But the thing I did want to point out, oh, and don't forget, oil, that's the biggie, uh, Bally Poppin. And you'll see why Bally Poppin uh, and Palembang are so important because, you know, when it comes to oil on the map, uh, Bakersfield's got some oil too, but when it comes to oil on the map, it doesn't get bitter, bigger than Palembang uh, and you know, Bali Poppin's obviously a big one as well. So, you know, just keep going down here. Let's take off all industry and let's go to manpower. Now, something I've been doing, when you start the game, everything is on automatic repair, uh, or it should be. Um, and so, you know, you've got everything repairing. What does that mean? So the one of the things you can control, you can't send out factories other places or change what they do, but you can change whether they get repaired or not when they're damaged. And it's actually a fairly important concept. One of the things you want to do is go to every manpower center. And you may say, what do you mean a factory called manpower? Well, that's how the game generates new troops for you or generates uh, humans, uh, I guess males over the age of 18, uh, to fill out your reinforcements, uh, to build new units. It does it through something called manpower. And in this game, instead of just kind of abstracting it, it they're actually in different cities. You have think of it like a manpower factory like it's you know along the assembly line there they're creating humans uh it's a it's a manpower creation one of the things that you want to do before you start the grand campaign is go here now i've done a lot of these i haven't done them all but i've done a lot of these so let's do one that i haven't done like cheng chow okay so we click on cheng chow it takes us to cheng chow in china this is the production. Now, because I'm playing full screen, it's hard to see. But if you look down here in your game, you'll see the icon for manpower. And if you think of this like a massive board game, which it really is, it's no different than the little manpower token being on the map. OK, and if we click on our production here or industry, I guess it's called industry, but think of it, as, you know, production industry, you'll see the different industry that's in Cheng Chow. Uh, you can see the totals, manpower, heavy industry, light industry, so on and so forth. Um, and you'll see here, manpower, resources, light industry, okay? One of the things, now I do not do this in China. Now that is unlike what Cole tells you to do, uh, because, I, and I'm not saying he's wrong, I just don't do it. But every place other than China, you click repair off. Now Cole says to do repair off everywhere i leave it on in china because some of their manpower centers that you can hold on to for a while are actually damaged now the other argument for this and you may say well what's going on here so when the japanese attack or bomb cheng chow they have a chance at damaging your manpower resources or light industry okay and when they do you're going to produce less of these things okay um, so wouldn't you always want those to be on repair? Well, manpower is kind of one that you don't. And the reason is, is that it costs a lot. And as the allies, you are going to get plenty of manpower for the most part. I mean, manpower is not your problem as the allies. And so a lot of, you know, advanced players like to turn this repair off on manpower because it eats up a lot of supply. And the argument out in China why to do it is you have a real supply problem to begin with, right? So if a lot of your supply is going into repairing manpower, which you have an abundance of, you're probably wasting it. Um, that's the idea, okay? Pretty much, generally speaking, you want to turn manpower repair off every base that has, or I'm sorry, yeah, I guess it would be base, every base or, you know, city, town 
that has it, you want to turn that off, especially in places like Australia. India you know, is a big one. You just don't want a lot of supplies going to repairing their manpower uh, because they've got so much manpower, you'll never run out of it anyway. Okay. Um, generally speaking, though, you do want repair on in most cases for light industry, heavy industry, oil. Let me tell you a place that you would not want that on, and that would be Palembang. And let's go to Palembang. All right. And let's look at what industry Palembang has. It does have some manpower. We're going to turn that off for repair okay so as it gets bombed will eventually just it will not be producing any new manpower that's okay uh resources um okay we're gonna turn that off as well oil we're gonna turn that repair off and refinery we're gonna turn that repair off and you may say what why would you do that because you know it's a massive I can tell you 1020, I think, is the second largest refinery in the game. The only one that's bigger, I think, is at Los Angeles. Um, there may be another one in the United States that's close, but I'm pretty sure a 1020 refiner. Think of these as kind of going from zero to 1000. Now you would say, well, wait a minute, that's 1020. Yes, you know. There are a few that are bigger than a thousand, but kind of think of these as zero to one thousand. This is a massive refinery. This is massive oil production uh, out here at Palabang. So you may say, well, you know, why turn that off? Because the Japanese are probably going to capture it at some point. And when they do, if they've been bombing it beforehand, that's good. Because they take this uh, industry over and they would then have to spend a lot of supply and, and resource to rebuild this stuff, right? So one of the big, you know, cruxes of, of the Pacific War and World War II and also in this game very accurately is the Japanese are out trying to find oil and resources, okay? Okay. Those places on the map, like Bali Papan and Palembang and even Ustaven and Batavia and Surubaya, the reason they're so valuable is because if the Japanese can capture and get those and they're still in a good uh, state of repair, they can then get that oil that they need to drive the Japanese war machine, right? So you want to turn these off at places like Palembang, the repair off, because you're just working for the Japanese player. You know, if he bombs refinery and it goes down to, let's say, 400, all right, but we build it back up to 600, and then he takes over the refinery, we've kind of, you know, cut off our nose to spite our face. Uh, you know, we've rebuilt a refinery for him. Um, so that's the idea there. So that's what I'm going around doing on the map now. Uh, we had talked about, or I was talking about nodes. So now you see here at Palembang, the ships, I've set up every dang task force in the game. I think I've touched or looked at every unit, uh, which is over 5,000 allied units, um, in the game. This is what you see at Palembang. I've got the task forces set up. I think last time we were around Java, talking about Java, you can see here, Batavia. I've got uh, task forces heading up to Palembang to take as much um, fuel out of here as I can. Now, why would I do that? Well, if you look at Palembang, it's already got 100,000 in fuel. If he were to take that over, that's just fuel he can use, right? And if you think about how much 100,000 tons is, uh, I mean, that's enough to, to fuel several carrier task forces from now until the end of the game. So you want to get in here and take as much of that fuel out as you can at Palembang. Now, it'd be great if we could get it down to Oosthaven, but this rail line just is pretty dang slow, I can tell you from playing this game a million times. So you got to send, and it's very dangerous work, all right? So you want to send your not-so-good tankers. And what is a not-so-good tanker? Well, this is a perfect example. It's only got 3,000 endurance and 1825 capacity. That's not good. Uh, that's the kind of stuff. And if we look, essentially, you want to send in tankers, if you can, that are less than 15 points of victory value into places like Palembang. 
okay? Um, another example of that, so I set up, you know, Suru, talking about nodes, nodes are Surubaya, Batavia, Palembang really isn't one because you're just trying to get everything out of here uh, before the Japanese player can get here. Singapore really isn't one because in the Malayan Peninsula, I've got everything set up to try to get down the peninsula as fast as we can and defend here, Mersing to Singapore to Kuala Lumpur, kind of this triangle. We're going to try to hold him off. He's already landed in Kwantan. Um, we're going to try to hold him off from getting to this rail before we can get the hell out of there uh, for all of these troops up here. I mean, you have a lot of troops at a place like Alar Store. Uh, you want to try to get them. So it's 224 in assault strength up here at Alor Star. You want to try to get that down the rail as fast as you can to Singapore and then set up shop here and hold it for as long as you can. You also want to try to get whatever troops you can out of Singapore that aren't locked into the the Malayan army and so I mean if we look and uh, we look at Singapore look at all of the task forces I set up at Singapore uh, including the Prince of Wales well that's not at Singapore it's out here we've got um, the Prince of Wales trying to get the hell out of here as fast as he can uh, but look at all these task forces now there are transports in here why is that well if we look at our army uh, that's actually here, you can see most of it is Malaya Army restricted. Most of that we're going to leave here. But something that's 3rd India Indian Corps is not restricted to Malaya. So we're going to get it out of here, load it up on a transport, and take it somewhere else. Now I'm not going to give away where we're going to take all this stuff. We'll go over that in previous or <laughs> previous in subsequent episodes. But Things that are in 3rd Indian Corps here, this uh, brigade, a uh, cavalry regiment, uh, is not restricted to Malaya. I think there were three or four different things that I was able to get out of here. Uh, it was a big talking point in our first Let's Play about Australian troops, uh, because we do have some Australian troops. Now, you don't see them here at Singapore. We do have a Kiwi engineering force. I can tell you, I'll just give away the ghost, that is actually, and the reason I'm going to do it is because I haven't set them to prepare for here, but you can see that's going to get on a transport and go straight to Palembang, uh, and we'll set up the engineering crew there. For one reason, I've mean, got a lot of air forces that are coming down here. Uh, also, we'll have more troops coming into Palembang, uh, and we want to build up the base at Palembang as fast as we can. Engineers obviously help that. Uh, we've got all kinds of you know task forces trying to get the heck out of here. We've got capital ships. Those are not them. Uh, patrol gunboats, HDMLs. We've got, look at these transports. That's that uh, brigade I was talking about. And the cavalry as well. Dominion Monarch. Those are getting out of here to Oosthaven. Okay, so you can see we're just trying to, and they're on full speed. They're going to try to load these guys before his bombing runs really have an effect. Now we have a lot of fighters. Here. Well, I say a lot. A lot's probably an overstatement, but we've got, uh, you know, like these seven buffaloes in a squadron, we're going to have them up at a cap 60, okay? Uh, buffaloes fly best at 15,000 feet. Uh, we've got them out at maximum range uh, six <clears throat> because it covers some of the other towns or bases in Malaya that I want to cover. And most of, you know, all the fighters will be up. Some of the torpedo bombers will be hitting uh, naval attack. Uh, some of them I'm getting out of here, and these are just the remnants of them that are being repaired, uh, fixed in some way, and then they'll fly out of here. I flew a lot of stuff out uh, that you can't really protect. So, you know, level bombers don't do you a whole hell of a lot of good at Singapore. Uh, you could use them as some kind of naval attack, but we've got enough torpedo bombers here that we're going to run the torpedo bombers out to do naval attack. Now, those planes are finally probably going to be short. Uh, for this world they're going to get to the bottom of the sea uh, but maybe we'll get a lucky shot in we'll get a transport maybe we'll get a capital ship uh, we'll get something uh, that we can uh, put up on our trophy wall um 
So, you know, look, you're going to get a lot more planes at some point. So some of these at Singapore, uh, you know, you're sacrificing. But the fighters, definitely, we're going to have up in the air doing as much cap as we can. Uh, because when he finally, you know, destroys the runway here, we want to eventually have all of these out of here to Palembang, Ustaven, Batavia, Surabaya. We will get them out as he starts to damage the runway. Um, I'm getting, like I said, everything south. Uh, I got this out of Georgetown to the extent I could, you can see 12 of them got damaged. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they can get out of there, uh, but he'll probably continue bombing the runway uh, here at Georgetown so we can't get them out. They're already damaged. There's nothing we can do about it. That happened before we even had a chance to do anything. So Sumatra, uh, what am I doing? Well, I'm going to hold here at Sabang. I think it's always pretty wise to do that if you can. Uh, it just gives him something else to think about. You're also fairly close up here to Port Blair, Colombo. Um, and so I'm just going to hold here at Sabang. But everything else is coming south for the most part. Now, I will keep forces at each of these three bases uh, just so he doesn't have an easy, clean landing over here. Uh, but usually a Japanese player is coming straight for Palembang. I'm transferring everything off these islands. We're going to set up a nice base at Sibiret. Uh, Ustaven, we're, I defend Ustaven very hard, um, along with Batavia, Tajilajap, Surubaya. That's your triangle here. Now, I do like to have a unit at each of these bases, so again, he doesn't have a clean landing. Um, if we come up to Celebus, there's not a whole lot to do with Celebus. Uh, you know, I sort of keep everything here. It just gives him another island he's got to uh, deal with. It takes a little bit of time. It's not a whole lot of assault value anyway. Uh, I set up a really strong base at Koapang, at uh, La Turn here, and at uh, Samlaki. So those are our three bases down here to kind of shield. I put up a huge shield to the extent I can with Dutch forces uh, before he can even think about getting to Darwin. OK, so, you know, I'll have a lot of stuff at Darwin, too, but I try to have an kind of an introductory shield into uh, coming towards Australia. Um, same deal over here. I think we talked about this last time about Moresby, Buna, Lay. I mean, I, I try to build these kind of three base triangles. You don't want to be you know, over trying to overstock every dang base out here. You can't protect them all. So you pick two or three and you say, I'm going to throw it all in there. And you're better off being concentrated. At least that's my opinion. If we go up to the Philippines here, uh, you know, in Mindanao, you're in a really bad shape from the start. It looks like he's thinking about coming over here and landing. Uh, I generally put everything in Davao or Davao, if it is, and Cagayan. You know, I put it in those two. I move it all over here. I congregate as much as I can to make it as tough as possible. Maybe you hold him off another three or four turns. Eventually, he's going to take Mindanao. Everything that I could fly off of this island, I did. Uh, there are B-17s that are all over the Philippines. I flew them all out of here to the extent they weren't damaged. Uh, you have some at Bengal. Uh, Batangis. You have some down here at uh, Cagayan. I got them all out. Uh, I also do try to put a strong force at Cebu if I can. I also take one point, and let me show you an example of the ships that I put into the firing uh, line. I think this is probably, yep, uh, the Montana is okay. Uh, 4,000 endurance, 1,000 capacity. All right, I've got this going to Bally Poppin. It's going to then load up supply and try to come right back out here. Now, it very, very well may be sunk, but it's a one-point ship. Anything that's under five points, I will send back out into the firing line in places like this. It has two effects. One is if you can get the supply back in there, you can hold out a lot longer because the reason a lot of these bases fall is not necessarily because the Japanese overwhelm the base, but it's because they starve out. They just don't have enough supplies, so they lose effectiveness and they either surrender or they eventually, the Japanese just kind of walk in there, right? So any supply we can get back in here is great. So a one-point ship, that's not going to kill us. And a 1,000 tons of supply, if it gets back out here, could, <coughs> could help us last another 10 turns, um, you know, depending on what you've got at the base. So it does that. Also, just a tip, these little cargo ships like this will sometimes attract his naval attack air squadrons. 
And okay, so they sink the the Montanas. Uh, okay, well he gets one point. He does block a little bit of supply coming into doomed uh, ground units anyway. But he's used up uh, fuel. He maybe loses a plane. It's something else they can't attack. Maybe you get a, a capital ship or one of your better ships or a better transport out because he attacked this ship. Um, and so I find that taking all those 4,000 endurance, 1,000 uh, capacity ships um, that are usually they have 1,000 capacity or 1,750 capacity. I think maybe we had one or two at Kangayan. Yeah, we had two here. Exact same idea. Endurance 4,000. One has a capacity of 1750. One has a capacity of 1,000. I run it down here to Bally Poppin. We'll pick up supplies and I'll put it right back in here if I, well, I mean, I'm going to try. And if he sinks this whole task force, he's going to pick up a grand total of two points there, uh, one point there for three total. Uh, but he probably won't. A lot of times these can fly under the radar if he's focusing on other things. If we could get another 2750 supply in here, uh, Kagayan could last another six months. Oh, well, that might be overstating it. Three or four months, um, that would give them enough supply to do that. So try to sneak those back in here. Um, and again, worst case scenario, they get sunk, but the, but it didn't hit something else. Here's two more of those. Uh, you see here, 1,000 capacity, 4,000 endurance. One of the things playing as the allied player that you gotta get used to is you're gonna lose stuff. Uh, it's gonna get sunk. Uh, you're gonna, you know, say, dang it, oh no. You know, you watch the animation or whatever and you're like, oh my gosh, I just lost these two transports. The game's over. Uh, no, you're gonna get a million of these ships. Uh, and that's barely hyperbole. I mean, you get a lot of these ships, thousands of them, I would say. Uh, victory one, you know, victory points one, victory points one. And that's what we're playing for. Well, ultimately we're playing, we want to invade Japan and win the war the old fashioned way. But if you have to win on points, losing one point ships is not gonna be the reason you lose the game. So send them back into the firing lines and have them be the ones that go in there. Now, what do I do in the Philippines? Well, I pretty much drop everything back to Clark Field and to Manila. So these two bases, and then I have some stuff at Bataan here. Uh, so it's really these three bases, all right? I will tell you, um, I counterattacked right here. Both of these and here. Uh, this invading force at Lingayan, well, all three of these I did. San Fernando, Lingayan, and Batangas. I'm not sure how strong these are. It's showing 6,600 troops. Uh, this is showing 1,500 that we spotted. And this is showing 15,000. Okay, that was a bigger force, but they're not bright red. This is the best shot you're going to get at these troops because eventually he's going to have enough here to, you know, it's going to be a slog for him, but he's going to have enough to take, you know, Manila and Clark Field, the two main bases on the Philippines. We may as well go for it right now. This is the best opportunity you're going to have to put a bloody nose on him. Uh, and so I'm counterattacking in all three of these places. I feel like maybe he landed a little weak in a couple of these places. Now, maybe not up here at San Fernando, uh, but here and here, uh, Lingayan and Batangas, Batangas uh, I'm counterattacking there. And I'll do that when I don't see bright red and he tries to land somewhere, uh, because usually that's your best shot of hitting him. Otherwise, like I said, I flew the B-17s out. Uh, stuff that's restricted, I'm just leaving here. Uh, I set up all the submarines. I've got submarines everywhere here. Uh, the ones that were left, uh, <laughs> you know, like I said, we lost quite a few. Uh, if we look at the information and look at, I don't, I can't remember. Uh, at Manila, here we go. Yep, we, uh, I couldn't remember if it showed subs here. War Plan Pacific does not show subs as ship sunk. Uh, but this game does. Uh, tarpon, permit, sorry, all went down. The S-41 went down. If we sort it by type, our submarine group just got devastated here at Manila. S-41, S-38, the Sculpin, the Sorry, the Sturgeon, the Stapper, the Skipjack, the Seal, the Permit, the Perth, and the Tarpon. We lost a lot of subs. 
uh we'll recover we'll be fine i you know but holy man oh man and we lost a bunch of other stuff too we lost uh some akls a tanker an ao i hate losing the trinity that's a good ship it's a 20 point ship uh the langley i you know we lost a lot of stuff we're going to try to get the rest of it the heck out of here we'll see if we can um okay so that's the philippines really uh again malaya we're moving south sumatra i'm coming but doing a couple of different things burma uh mole mine pagu uh rangoon we got a lot of stuff coming in here uh we got a lot of stuff coming down here uh we're gonna set up shop here the best we can the flying tigers are at tangu and they're at rangoon now by the time i got to the flying tigers i didn't have enough uh command points left to switch them out of the chinese headquarters i into 221 raf uh, if you look, 221 RAF is at Rangoon. It's right here. Um, and so I always put the Flying Tigers in it with 221 RAF. I generally have them run out of Rangoon, although I probably will leave a squadron here at Tangu. That's because he will be trying to bomb that runway at Rangoon like nuts. Uh, and, you know, as it starts to get or to deteriorate, we'll switch the Flying Tigers out somewhere else. Now, usually they absolutely shred the Japanese uh, Air Force at this point in the game. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, against the AI, the AI fly, you know, kind of dumbly flies a lot of bombers in unescorted, and you just shred those up. He'll have a lot of zeros coming in with them, uh, so they'll have fighter escort. So we'll see. Uh, how that goes. I mean, sometimes, you know, I kind of conserve the Tigers, but right now I think uh, the one group that I do have down here that's in 221 Group RAF already, 23 of the Flying Tigers, um, I do like to grab... Now, the Flying Tigers, be cool about it. You can try to grab more pilots into these squadrons. Now, you can't do it right at the start, but later you can. Historically, there were 99 of them, and so just don't do more than like 33 pilots in each of the squadrons it's just a historical i think it's kind of a, a ass move if you do it so you know i will build up to 33 for the three squadrons uh but that's it uh i'm running cap 50 now depending on how much uh air traffic we're getting over rangoon we may go to 60 uh but until he starts bombing there um I'm, i leave it at 50 and then once it starts up i'll crank it up to 60. Uh, now, luckily over here at Tangu, it does cover Rangoon. You can see they've got enough range here. I've got them up at a cap 50, cap 50. So we've got 22. I did take this one up to 30 pilots and I took this one to 30 pilots. I'd probably take the other one to 30 and just call it 90 and call it a day. Um, you can see their average experience is 60. Morale is 71. Uh, they are a great force. Now, Mandalay, we didn't have our garrison requirement. That's a big thing to remember when you're moving around India is always look at the garrisons. Now, uh, because you do have garrison requirements. What do I mean by that? It's right here, garrison, and you can see it's in red because we don't have enough uh, AV here or assault value here. So we click on Mandalay, garrison. We've only got 12 assault value here. You need 20, and you will lose a victory point for every turn that you don't have the garrison requirement met. So I have stuff coming to Mandalay. Now, why do we only have 12? Well, if you look here, Mandalay uh, Battalion uh, has a 7, and the Base Force has a 5. That adds up to 12. I'm no mathematician, but I did learn that at some point. Uh, so that's 12 points, so we got to get stuff to Mandalay as fast as ca I can. So I did strategically move something. I can't remember what to go into Mandalay. Uh, Lashio, you kind of want to keep something here. This is the Burma Road as it comes around here. Uh, you basically need that to run all the way from uh, Rangoon. All right, this is the Burma Road. It comes around here. Now it turns into a minor road when it gets around here, but I think it has to, I can't remember. I think it has to go into Sayung uh, here. Uh, and that means, you know, if you've got this, uh, the Burma Road is operational and you get extra supply for the Chinese each turn that you hold that Burma Road. So, I mean, that really kind of guides you about where you want the defense. You know, Rangoon and Pagu, uh, mole mine here, uh, but then here, here, here. It doesn't do you any good to guard this base. You know, get up here. Uh, you can't let him get on the road. So uh, I got things pulling back, pulling up. 
We're going to set up a really strong defense. Uh, Chittagong, so we did all of India. You know, you can look at Calcutta and see how many damn task forces I set up. That's just page one. Uh, we've got a lot of anti-sub going on here. A lot of human players love to get up in here to Calcutta. I've got stuff going down into Rangoon, but again, let me show you which ones. You know, a, a, a cargo like this, the Karoa, 16,800, 6,400 capacity, do not send that to Rangoon. That's going to Cape Town. Anything with over, tw over 12,000 goes to Cape Town, over 12,000 of endurance. Everything that's 12,000 on the nose, send it up to uh, Abaddon. Abaddon or Aden. Okay, so in India, you have a lot of 12,000 endurance ships. Uh, send those to Abaddon or Aden. Uh, anything over that, send to Cape Town. So you can see that's going along the coast to Cape Town. Uh, fun. Okay, this is going into Rangoon. This is the best ship I would ever send into Rangoon. I think they're five-point ships. They are victory value. I will only do that once. You can see I do not have that on com uh, continuous supply because they're going in once to drop off as much supply as they can, and then they're getting the heck out of here. Uh, these guys I didn't even send in there. I'm sending them over to Madras. When they've got like 6,000 endurance, keep them in and around India. You can put them in Colombo maybe. You could put them up in Bombay, uh, something like that, and supply out to the little islands. Uh, I've got this transport going to Madras. We could sit here and talk about that, but I'm not going to. Uh, 12,300 endurance, 4,100 capacity. That goes to Abaddon. And, I, you know, all of my task forces, I realized as I moved around the map, I do n I never put more than four ships in a task force if I can help it. Um, and then I said that in uh, blue. Okay, that's because, you know, these were all like ships. I always put all like ships together. When it gets to Abaddon, I will break this up. As a matter of fact, I should just auto disband it. Uh, and that way I'll split it into four and three. Uh, you can see I've got patrol craft out here doing ASW. I've got, you know, a bunch of, you can kind of see the patrol zone there. Um, let's look at a cargo that I send into Rangoon. Okay, here again, 14,000 endurance. That goes to Cape Town. Uh, 16, that's going to go to Cape Town. Uh, 14, that goes to Cape Town. Uh, where is my, ah, here we go. Okay, here we are again. Endurance 4,000. Capacity 1,750. So this is a two-point ship. This is a one-point ship. I send them in unescorted. They are currently CS for supplies, continuous supply out to Rangoon. And you can see right around the corner as fast as he can. If he gets sunk, it gets sunk. But those are the only ships really I will continuously try to send into Rangoon. I have a bunch of them coming over from Colombo as well. Uh, these guys, yeah, this is the one I'm just sending in one time because they're five point ships. I will send them in once, but then that's it. I'll move them back out over here to do something else. Uh, and then we'll just continue a supply or try to into Rangoon with one or two point ships. And like I said, that, you know, goes for, uh, Col Colombo as well. 4,000 endurance, 1750 on the capacity. Into Rangoon it goes, continuous supply. If he blows them out of the water, so be it. Um, at Colombo, we had a lot of stuff, including we have these special aircraft, uh, you know, uh, transports. That'll go up to Aden. That's where you get your planes. Uh, you can see there were a lot, you know, I've got a lot of ASW out here, so on and so forth. Uh, up in here, obviously, the big one is Abaddon. Now, it doesn't have a whole lot of ships yet, but I probably got over 100 to 150 ships coming to Abaddon. And then it's just Abaddon to Karachi, Abaddon to Karachi, over and over. Aden to Karachi, same idea. Over to Cape Town. Uh, you can see we don't have much there now. I probably have 100 to 150 ships coming to Cape Town. They will all be heading to Perth. Why do I have five left? I think these are all transports. Yeah, they are. They're transports. And I did leave a couple of little cargo ships in case we need cargo capacity uh, for, you know, various troops or whatnot that we want to carry with the transports. Uh, but for now, they're going to sit here. Uh, the other big one that just takes forever ever but it's fun is china uh you know chin chow loyang 
Cyan, Yanan. You can figure out the important bases. Uh, we get out of Sinyang. We set up huge at Ai Chang. You don't want him to get up into here because Chongqing is kind of the provincial provincial capital up here. Uh, Chongqing, Chengdu, you know, those are where you keep your reserves. You fly um, training missions with your aircraft, etc. But I've got a lot of things coming out of the reserves because... Okay, if you kind of draw a line here, or I always think of it really as this main rail. That's what I'm going for in China. I've got everything drawing back, and we're going to sit right here at Lu Chao. I've got a lot of things coming down this railway to Lu Chao. We're going to set up shop there. We're going to set up shop at Kukong and a little bit at Wu Chao. He's got a huge, massive force at Canton. Uh, we just want to slow them down until we can get everything up here to Lu Chao. Uh, sometimes, the, you know, a Japanese player will go straight to Kuei Lin. you got to be careful about that. If it looks like he's going to go that way, you got to pull back here, unfortunately. But you have a lot of stuff you can send out of Chongqing down to this way that's all right now sitting in the reserves. So all of this is the China Central Reserves. Uh, you've got a second page of it even. Uh, you can send all that to Kuei Lin. Um, Changsha, obviously incredibly important. I've got so much dumping. All of this I pull back to towards Changsha. Now, I may try to protect this hex or this hex or, you know, I'm not going to give away the whole game plan here. Um, but most of it's all, you can see the little divots that they're, you know, going to be on the move. They're all coming back to Changsha. So it's Changsha, uh, Ai Cheng. Uh, we give up Sin Yang. Uh, we come up to Nan Yang. Uh, we come up to Cheng Chao, Luoyang, Cyan. Uh, and then I put the commies out in Yan'an. And so, you know, I'll have uh, Mao Zedong and the Chinese Reds move out here to Yan'an. We've got aircraft back here, so on and so forth. So anyway, uh, this is going to be a fun one. Let's see what Lodric has in store for us. Uh, I am going to send this turn back to him as it is as it stands right now. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. When we come back next time, uh, the first thing we'll do is play the turn. The play turn file he sends back to me. And then that'll be, you know, kind of one whole episode. And then I'll do an episode 4B or 4.2. And uh, that'll be, you know, the things I'm moving around or setting up. But now that I did the first turn, the big beast, uh, we should be in good shape because I move everything to nodes. So I know where they are and I can usually get through it really, really quickly after turn one once I know where everything's headed. So anyway, Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.